Welcome everyone. Good to see you all and uh, good to see uh, some fresh faces as well, some interested uh, parties. Um, today we are here together for the final for our AI for Pelicans challenge. And before we start, I really like to thank our uh, partners for this challenge, Rewilding Europe. Of course, the Romanian or Society of Ornithology and big special thanks to Sebastian. Then for some sponsoring Huawei and Roboflow for letting us use their tools. Um, I will do a quick introduction today. Um, furthermore, David will uh, get into the data preparation and semi-supervised labeling. Then we hear from Kabir on multi-class classification and then other presenters for team two or maybe even also David will also uh, tell us about the general pelican detection and the GUI that they made. Um, I left some time in the end for Sebastian to do some final words, uh, if you feel up for it, uh, otherwise I'll, uh, I'll give it a go. Um, and if you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to raise a hand. Um, I will, or you can put them in chat and then uh, I will try to uh, ask them throughout the presentation. Um, for the people who don't know us yet, we are Fruit Punch AI and we are the global AI for good community. And we started this community because we believe that to solve humanity's greatest challenges, we need to educate AI engineers at scale with an ethical and sustainable mindset. So how do we do this? We do this by organizing AI for good challenges. And these are challenges that are all gearing towards sustainable development goals. And in these challenges, you can really apply AI in practice and learn in a peer-to-peer -peer manner. AI for Pelicans was one of our uh, AI for Wildlife Lab and uh, is one of us in a series of uh, conservation challenges that we are hosting. The problem that we are trying to solve uh, today and also over the last two, 10 weeks in this challenge is that uh, uh, conservationists and biologists in Romania, but uh, actually all over Europe, uh, but especially focusing on the Danuba Delta, are flying over the deltas with very lightweight planes, taking pictures of uh, large flocks of birds in this case pelicans these images can show up to 5000 pelicans per image and they all need to be counted in order to do population monitoring uh, this manual counting can be very tiring and is prone to error so uh, in order to automate this we set out to build computer vision models to tackle this problem over the last 10 weeks, we had two groups working with a total of 14 AI for good engineers. And in this combined effort, we put in over a thousand hours of AI engineering work. So quite a big effort. Um, yeah, with the exact goal was to detect and classify pelicans in Romania to evaluate the breeding population based on aerial photographs. Um, by the lack of a pelican <laughs> emoji, unfortunately, I had to use all the other birds, uh, but you get the idea. So we started this challenge on the 30th of May, and we went to two weeks of research and education. Uh, although the research, I think, has been continued over the entire 10 weeks, uh, in the first two weeks, we had uh, some cool master classes after which we really got to the working phase. After, four, after four weeks, we had a midterm presentation uh, where we steered the, uh, steered the goals into uh, the right direction a little bit and uh, so that all the teams had a clear view of what had to happen in the last six weeks of the challenge. Today we arrive at the final presentation. Uh, the team will have one last week to finalize the report and document all their code to make sure everything is uh, properly uh, open sourceable. They will also present the solution that they built for Sebastian uh, and I believe there will also be a demo during the presentation. Yeah, we basically picked up from a real-world data set. We did all the pre-processing, uh, labeling even. Uh, we tried different models, uh, different evaluation techniques, and eventually even we developed a uh, application or a program for uh, Sebastian to use. So I'm, uh, I'm uh, very excited to see the presentations here today, and I'm already very proud of what I've saw, uh, of what I've seen throughout the, throughout the ten weeks. Um, but I won't be taking up too much of the time. Uh, Davide, can I give you the word or? So, hello everyone. I am Davide. I'll be talking about uh, data preparation and a bit the context of what we are, we faced as a problem uh, in this challenge. And I'm talking on behalf of everyone that took part 
in this process, which was in the initial part of the of the challenge. And we had many people contribute to the manual labeling of the images. So if, if I have uh, forgotten some name, please forgive me uh, and raise your hand. Um, so let's start with what the images look like. These are two images uh, that I took as an example from the data set that um, the Ornithological Society of Romania has provided us. And we have one image to the left that is a colony of adult nesting pelicans early and during the breeding season. And then on the right, we have an image that is from the late breeding season when the juveniles have already hatched from their eggs and they have become full grown chicks. You can see these are very distinct kind of images because the adult pelicans are white and they are easy rec easily recognizable whereas the juveniles are almost uh, indistinguishable from the mud, which is a great thing for protecting them from predators, but it's a terrible thing for Sebastian when he has to look at these images. Um, these images are very large, and you can zoom in to see the individual pelicans. And that's what um, the, the team does. They try to classify the pelicans in four different classes. You have the nesting pelicans, which are the majority of the pelicans uh, present in the, in the images. And as you can see uh, in this snapshot here, they are the ones with the red dots. Then you have some pelicans that are called survey pelicans, and those are the ones that are not uh, reactively on a nest, and they are generally on the outskirts of the nest colony and they are just sitting there, uh, usually standing compared to the other pelicans. Um, however, not every time it is easy to classify a pelican as a nesting or survey, so it is widely accepted in the community to also label some pelicans as uncertain. And those are the cases where there are no uh, clear indications of whether a pelican is nesting or not. Uh, finally, we have the juveniles, and as I said before, those are the chicks, and they are the ones that have a muddy color of their uh, plumage. So currently, the process uh, consists of the scientists going out in the field, taking those aerial pictures, then opening Photoshop, zooming in into the images, and sitting down at the table for countless hours, annotating one by one all the pelicans that they see in the picture. And this is a very long process. And as everyone that has tried this during the challenge can tell you, it can take up to one hour per image uh, once you get uh, the hang of it. And of course, this is a process that requires a certain expertise, uh, but it is also quite um, tiring. So I can, I can assure you that after you've, you've been working on an image for 30 minutes, you'll start seeing just pelicans everywhere you go. So through AI, the objective is to uh, make this much uh, faster. And uh, we want to annotate not only the dot where the pelican is, but also the area where the pelican is staying which is the classic way of doing things in computer vision uh, detection with uh, what are called bounding boxes. This process, if I'm not wrong, uh, can take with the current uh, method that has been developed uh, by, by Team2, uh, less than five minutes per image um, on a computer without a graphical uh, processing unit GPU. Um, the Romanian Ornithological Society has provided us with 154 images taken between the years 2009 and 2018, where the majority of those images were of nesting pelican, nesting adult pelicans in the uh, early breeding season. And 23 of these consisted also of the juveniles. Um, from this chart here, you can see how many annotations of pelicans there are per each image in the images that have been given us 
by the uh, scientists. And uh, you can see that on average, we are going to have more than 500 uh, pelicans per image. There are, however, some issues with the annotations that uh, we have received. Firstly, the format of those files is not friendly for AI frameworks as they are saved in PSD, which is the usual file format for Photoshop. And the annotations themselves are also stored in the PSD uh, file. So in one initial part of the project was to extract this information and be able to use it with the classic uh, frameworks for deep learning like PyTorch or TensorFlow. The other pro issue was that the majority of the images that we received mostly had annotations for nesting and juvenile. And there were many images that did not have annotations for the survey, maybe because over the years, the way things are done um, have changed. But this created a big imbalance in the classes that, that we have uh, for our classification models. And lastly, the annotations to make, uh, to make the process faster, uh, the scientists only use points. But as we already discussed, for computer vision, it is usually used uh, bounding boxes. So we needed a way to convert those points to bounding boxes. Um, given all these issues, we decided to try our, ourselves as a team to re-annotate some of the images so that we could increase the number of data points for the other classes, and that we could also give spatial information to the, uh, to the annotations, not just having the points. So we started this uh, with, what, with this semi-supervised process. We started with a manual annotation, firstly of five images, that then grew to 12 in a second phase. And then we used those images plus some images where we created the bounding boxes automatically from the points using a, a bounding box of a fixed size to train our first YOLO V8 model. YOLO V8 is a very popular model architecture for uh, image detection. And then once we use YOLO to predict uh, bounding boxes on the images that had not been annotated before, we did a manual check of the annotations and we fixed those that, that were wrong uh, ourselves. We repeated this iteratively a few times. And finally, we got to a data set of 21 manu manual annotations that have been used to train and test the models. Of these 21, six images we gave to Sebastian to have as our ground truth. And Sebastian also gave the comment, all of them were generally very well annotated. So uh, claps uh, for, for us, because we have become good Pelican annotators. Um, those six images that represent our uh, ground truth were chosen as the test set for the final evaluation. And the other images together with some images with points converted to bounding boxes of uh, fixed size were used to train the AI models. In this first part, we learned that definitely it's not easy being a Pelican scientist, and it takes long hours to sit there and count all the Pelicans in the images. However, we saw that when AI and humans work together, we can enhance both the speed and the performance of the applications. And finally, I think all of us got a newfound application uh, appreciation of pelicans, which are pretty cool creatures. For the next part, I will let uh, Achuka uh, speak for the first team. So for us as team one, our main mission was uh, to explore the various uh, different models and uh, architectures that are there so that you can find which ones are good for the job that we, are, we had. So what we did, uh, we also tasked to, uh, okay. Uh, we also tasked to compare and contrast various models 
and see the different trade-offs between speed, uh, results, accuracy, and other parameters that we had chosen. The next part. Uh, so mostly we started our approach with, uh, we had actually three approaches. Uh, in the first phase, we had to shortlist like which kinds of models we're going to work with. So we listed down some like the YOLO V5 model, the YOLO V8, a faster CNN, and uh, many other models that we're going to talk about much later on. Uh, then we also had a second phase in our path where we had to do a lot of research. So what we did, we had to go through different literatures and see like which models were good at performing uh, detection. So we had to do that and we also had to make sure that we checked the complexity, the resourcefulness, the results and the time frame in which the model would perform the inference on the on the object, which in this case are the pelicans that we wanted to what, to detect. Uh, furthermore, we went on to design the different models and try to replicate this. And we're happy to have tried out the YOLO V8, uh, a faster CNN, and a YOLO V5. So we tried to perform some of these tasks on those three models. So our results were listed down in a tabular form where we had the models we had chosen. And uh, from this, we saw that the yellowish models, which are the YOLO V5 and YOLO V8, we seem to have a very high accuracy. And they're actually very fast in detecting pelicans compared to the others. And we also saw that it was kind, its complexity was kind of moderate. It wasn't very hard to implement it compared to the Detectron, the faster CNN models. Then we also found out that, for example, the Mascara CNN, yes, it, were, it had a very accuracy, but then you find that it was kind of too slow. Even when you would perform inference, it takes like a lot of time. And I don't think that would be a very good task for, Se for Sebastian when he's going to perform, like to try to calculate the birds. So we, from this, I think we can recommend and see that the yellow models are actually very good and this can be implemented in the solution which Sebastian can be able to use. Uh, okay, so from the Pelican data, we saw some characteristics. Uh, we found out that there are a lot of nesting birds compared to the juveniles and the non-nesting and uncertain. So we found out that there was a lot of class imbalance where the model maybe is now going to detect mostly nesting birds compared to the juveniles, which were slightly few in the data set. Uh, so in our training, we also had certain metrics that we used like the F1 score. And this, is, this was part of a graph that we got from the training. Uh, we saw that the detection of the three classes was, uh, the confidence was around 70%. And I think that is slightly not bad. So we also had other metrics that we used like the MAP and for the YOLO V8 model, we trained mostly on that, that two sizes. That was the small and medium. And we, since they are slightly not very complex, like the large, the larger one, which would take more time training. And we didn't have enough resources to train on though at that time since we're using Google Colab. So we trained, okay. Uh, we trained mostly like for 140 epochs in our training. So when we performed inference on our data, as you can see from this image on the, on the left, you find out that the model was actually very good at uh, detecting the nesting birds and also some of the uncertain, but then you find out that the juvenile birds were not being detected at all. Uh, this can also be seen in the next image. The brown birds as a uh, David had already said, those are the, the juveniles. So our model wasn't able to detect some of them. And then as you can see from this graph, you find that in the ground truth, we had very many juvenile birds in the images, but then our model wasn't actually able to detect. So that's some of it. And then you can see that the model is performing well at predicting the, the nesting, non-nesting and uncertain. So we, also took that into consideration. So we learned a lot. Uh, 
the first thing we saw that uh, the YOLO models were actually very good since they're very simple. They were fast and also very accurate in detecting these pelican birds. So we found out that we can improve the model in certain ways. Uh, first of all, we had to do fine tuning where we can adjust hyperparameters like the learning rate, uh, also maybe increase the number of epochs for the model to train on. Then another technique that we thought of was to perform augmentation where we can perform other techniques like flipping, rotation, increasing maybe the brightness. That's how the model can be robust to some of those changes. So we faced also some challenges uh, some of them was the imbalance of the classes we've already seen earlier on, whereby you found that uh, some of the birds were not being, some of the classes were not being represented compared to the others. And then also we found out that the YOLO model isn't actually very good in uh, cluster data sets involving like very many classes. So I think that's, that's what we had from team one. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation for team one. So while team one was uh, trying different models, team two instead focused on uh, one specific model that is YOLO V8. And part of team two uh, was developing this. And another part of team two was continuing the iterative process for the labeling. Um, I think I will now let Adrian talk a bit uh, about the YOLO V8 challenges and the GUI application that he has developed. You can see now my screen? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, we created um, the program for detecting the, uh, the pelicans. Uh, we used uh, YOLO V8 for it. Um, the challenge that challenges that we had was the training of the um, the model and then specifically with the uh, juvenile uh, pelicans that was all already said um, I can show you the program how it's, it's working um, for this you can here you can select if you want output to Photoshop which I didn't spell correctly and to RoboFlow um, here you can select an image. Um, in the test images, I have uh, the images that were uh, checked by uh, Sebastian. I take this one. And now you can see if you want a general or a multi-class uh, uh, detection. Let's do multi and then say predict and start. This will take about 20 seconds, the detection. And if it's done, it will be stored in the Photoshop output folder. It will take a little bit of time. Always when you're presenting, it's always uh, always takes more time than anticipated, right? <laughs> yeah, most likely. But then um, this is the result of the detection. I can zoom in a little bit. Then you can see here the yellow greenish dots are the, the nesting pelicans. You can also go to the counting tool. Um, for the nesting, it's counting about 976 pelicans. And in total, it's uh, 1185. But if we do the same for the uh, for the other one, the juveniles, and do predict. Yeah, it's go going quite fast. It's also without the uh, GPU running, so it's twenty seconds for one photo, full resolution. And I saw the upload folder as well can you also upload like i don't know thousand image images at once yeah that's possible um i will do it uh, in a minute 
also. Like you see here, um, you see a lot of juveniles here that are not annotated here. So that's uh, in the water, it's okay. But on the land, it's, uh, hmm. it needs to be manually annotated or we have to further train the model, I think, to the program. You can also select a folder. Now it's in the same folder. I can select another folder, but then it will take a long time. I think I will only show the, the screen then. Data sets, images, select folder. And now you see there are 150, uh, 54 pelicans in here. If you start, it will take a long time. So I won't start it now. But here you see the details of the what will be trained. Uh, furthermore, you can also um, do RoboFlow output. Um, I have some results from RoboFlow in here. <laughs> These are the results from uh, RoboFlow that you get from uh, the detection. Zoom in. And also in the other images that I already detected with the uh, program. Furthermore, you can have some more settings for it. You can also, uh, for the Photoshop annotations, you can change the colors. And also you can change the, uh, the model, the model file what you want to use or the, the output folders for Photoshop and for RoboFlow. That is really cool. Is this, this, so this is running on the YOLO V8 model? Yeah, it is on the YOLO V8, YOLO V8 model, yeah. All right. I only have to check why it's giving an error there. It's, it took it was... about one week to, to build it. But... I mean, it's, that's amazing. I think <laughs> it's super fast. Um, are these uh, thresholds? Can you adjust them as well? Or yeah. Oh, okay, great. You, you can't go down to twenty uh, below twenty five percent. You can adjust this. You can, if you have more pelicans, you can also adjust it this to ten thousand. But that's the maximum. Maybe question, uh, so we're going to do a handoff with Sebastian where also these questions will be uh, 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 answered. But this is a question for Sebastian. Do you know what a confidence threshold is and what intersection over union means? Or Because I think we need to really uh, be clear about that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, it's maybe good to, to discuss this because I have an idea about the confidence threshold, but not about intersection over union. Yeah. So... Okay. Uh, I also did create a, some kind of manual for it. Okay. Perhaps it's... Uh, ah, nice. It's described here, I think. Also... A little manual. Yeah, that's really cool. Now I will stop the presentation, I think, for now. I mean, that, that's really nice, guys. Like, uh, that's uh, you came really far with the application as well already. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really impressed. Do we have more presentation to come or looking at? Um, I think no, no more. Thank you, awesome. Adrian. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Um, yeah, first of all, very good job, guys. I'm, uh, I'm really proud of you. <laughs> like, you pulled through. And uh, at the start of the challenge, there were a couple of questions that, uh, and, and also uh, the labeling we did have to, had to do ourselves for a bit, of course. Um, it has been blood, sweat, and tears, but uh, you guys pulled through, and uh, it's really amazing what you came up with. Um, 
if there are any questions left or uh, yeah, just comments, people, please feel free to add. I have one one more little comment. Uh, just just saying that over the the last week, there have been further annotations uh, done by Tor, and I think also Olga uh, checked for new, uh, new images. So maybe over the next week, the like a enhanced model can be trained further. Nice. Uh, oh, Sebastian, you have a question yeah well uh first of all i'd like to thank you because this is really amazing i mean just being able to immediately annotate an image in 20 seconds is already very different from what it means to manually annotate them so uh yeah my question would be exactly this that is there a possibility to further uh improve the model uh actually by by uh, uh feeding it uh, manual annotations in the future, or not really? Yeah, Davide, go ahead. So theoretically, yes. I think from, from the application that Adrian has done as of today, there is no option to uh, directly feed it new images, uh, but it is definitely something that can, can be done. Um, I think Adrian uh, has created uh, the, the possibility of picking a different model. So if you have new images and you train a different model, you can just swap the old one for the new one and consistently improve it. Well, I'm asking this mainly because, uh, you know, over, over the years, our uh, our, uh, the quality of the images that we are obtaining has changed quite a lot as well. So images that are, let's say, from 2017 or 18, on which we have worked now, are quite different from the ones that we will have, for instance, for this season or next season or so on. So we have much better resolution, we ha have uh, better lenses and so on. So even we, with the... Uh, um, images uh, obtained with drones, th those are slightly different. So uh, it's one of the main reasons why we would, would want to know if we can uh, gradually improve uh, the detection by feeding it new, new uh, images that are, might be of a different quality. Yeah, yeah. 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 It can be done, it's just not, not done now. But but it's, it can it can be done uh, in the future. Yes. Yeah, it's it's not integrated in the application itself to retrain models or or implement new models. But it's definitely something we can, uh, I think, even quite easily do. Um, all the notebooks that are that have been used to train the models, uh, they're available in our drive, and um, which we will also open source in the end of the challenge. So, um, if you come up with a new data set, let's say with uh, I don't know. Uh, 200 of very high quality images, um, very high quality labels that, that will almost for sure uh, also improve the models. Um, yeah, so maybe uh, we can stay in touch. I don't know if uh, how much work it is to actually retrain a model if you just have a, a plug and play uh, pipeline, if we have a plug and play pipeline for that, or if there are a lot of manual work to be done. But I think since we've already done it once, it shouldn't be too much trouble to uh, to do it another time with uh, with new data. That's great. Uh, and there's also one thing I wanted to ask uh, in terms of uh, detection of juveniles. Uh, do you think the main reason why the model is uh, facing problems in detecting them is is mainly due to the uh, color against the background? So basically, the detection is is uh, um, having issues because of that mainly, or uh, would it be because the juveniles are mainly uh, sitting in in groups that are very tight, and so it it's it's difficult for the model to predict uh, the number of individuals. Uh, I am asking this because uh, depending on the moment when you are uh, actually doing the evaluation. 
for instance, I am going to perform a, uh, an evaluation flight sometimes very soon now in August uh, because the juveniles are uh, about that age where they are uh, just in between fledged and already flying. Uh, their color changes gradually, so they're not that uh, brown anymore, and their color changes gradually to white. So I was just wondering if there is a better chance for the a better detection of the of the juveniles if they they start to be more contrasting against the background. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear your opinion. But I get. I think the the main reason is the lack of training data on juveniles um so in the training set that was used from the 21 images of which eventually six were test images so 15 images were used um i believe there were only two or three training images for juveniles right um yes correct the the manual annotations for the juveniles were uh fewer than uh the adults okay yeah. so, so i think it's a yeah mixed mixed cause uh it's it's definitely on on one side the lack of annotations and then the fact that they are you know e easily confounded with the mud yes thor yeah um and i think um on top of it um uh unlike the adult class there's a lot of like variation like within the class in like the age um uh, of like the juvenile so in some of the images they were like downy very, 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 very like young ones, all the way to sort of the um, already getting grayish white uh, sub sort of like adults. And I think to so much like variation, like within one class, um, I can't imagine does does the like model um, like a lot of good. So I think it's also sort of intrinsic to the category um, um, like juvenile. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I had another question. So, 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 like generally, um, from uh, just looking at the images, it, it looked like it, it was very accurate in uh, cl uh, classifying the birds, but but especially in uh, detecting the general uh, number of pelicans in the image. Um, do we have a um, uh, how do you say that nest or uh, an accuracy on how? Or let's what's it again? Uh, M A E, mean average. Why am I not knowing this anymore? So how many were we off from the general uh, number of pelicans from each inch in the test set? Mean average error. Ah, there we go. Sorry, I uh, blacked out for a second. <laughs> okay. Or is that not known yet? I think we'll come out with this number over the next week for the final report, or maybe Adrian has. Yeah, I did. Uh, let's say write down the the amount counted by the uh, program and what was counted manually. I have the image with the juveniles. Uh, in total, there were 500 juveniles but we counted 217 so that's a big difference uh, but with the other ones i only now say that the totals um, one image with five, 1517 pelicans manually counted and ai did uh, 1565 so that's a difference of about 40 or 50. And uh, no, other one with uh, 1190, we counted 1185 <laughs> with AI. Um, another one, 703, and we did AI counted 727. All right. So it's a uh... Yeah, I'd say that's pretty sick. <laughs> but uh, Sebastian, what do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, if even if it takes some time to uh, adjust the end result, it's still I mean, the the output is is great. Awesome. 
All right. Uh, I don't see any questions in the, in the chat left. Um, if there are no more questions left, then uh, Sebastian, I want to give you some final words and I'll close it off. Well, first of all, as I said, I'd like to, to thank everybody who was involved in this in this work because it's uh, it's been uh, going on very rapidly and uh, the result is uh, very, very uh, sick, as you say. <laughs> it's very nice. So, yeah, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Sebastian. All right, everyone. Yeah, so we have one last week to come up with the report and all the code collection. Um, Adrian, maybe we can uh, also have a quick chat on how, because I believe that a lot of the notebooks are also in your drive. So how we can best open sources um, also for future collaborators to maybe retrain models um, once there's data available. Um, but that said, oh yeah, next week we also have a handover meeting with Sebastian. That's the last time I will uh, I will see you all, uh, which is a shame, or at least I hope it's not the last time. I hope I'll see you guys in a lot of more challenges because it was a pleasure for me to work with you all. Uh, I really enjoyed the challenge. The results are stunning. And um, yeah, you guys can be really proud of yourself um, because yeah, not every challenge come on, comes up with the results uh, as this one. So um, yeah, it's a really cool one. I'll be writing. We'll be writing a nice blog post together with Thor uh, to uh, uh, be proud of the results and also to brag with everything uh, online, and so you can also share it. Uh, this final will also be uploaded to YouTube uh, in some time. I'll do some quick editing, but uh, yeah, I, I really want to thank you all uh, for all your hard work and time that you've put into it. Uh, I know you've all been doing this on a voluntary basis, uh, besides your job or your studies. So uh, I know it's a, it's a, it's a great uh, effort for you guys. So uh, I'm really thankful and uh, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to see you all in uh, any future challenges. Thanks everyone for being here tonight. And uh, I uh, hope to see you soon. Uh, if any of you uh, at any time is going to visit the Danube Delta, please get in touch. Oh, nice. Yeah. Can, can you well. bring us to see the Pelicans? Of course. <laughs> okay, I I'm in. Awesome. All right, have a fruitful day, guys.